Got a video here on what I think is one of the most important things that sets Cubase apart from so many other programs, and that's this very audio pitch shifting or pitch editing capabilities that are built into the software. So this comes with Cubase Pro, Cubase Artist, and of course it comes with Nuendo as well. And I really feel like this editing capability rivals programs like Melodyne, and I consider myself a Melodyne power user. I used it for years, and I do think it still has things that you can't do in Cubase, like edit polyphonic audio, which is still just kind of blows my mind. But in terms of regular pitch correcting, Cubase has everything that you would need to do incredibly surgical pitch correction. And disclaimer, I do get the updates for Cubase for free and Nuendo, but I was a paid user before I started doing all this YouTube stuff. And the only reason I do these videos is because I really do think Cubase and Nuendo has some of the best capabilities of any program out there. So let's get into the really nitty gritty details of Vary Audio and try and break it down in a quick video that you can use as a reference for years to come. Here we go. So for this video, I'm gonna be using the project that I used in a recent video on setting up vocal recording. And that was a little project that I did with my friend Toby, and this is her and her friend Helena's original song about Miles Davis. And so make sure you go watch that video if you're new to setting up and recording vocals. And I also have a video on comping that's a few years old now, but everything still applies for that. And normally what I would do in this process is comp Toby's vocals together here, and then save those as a file and pitch shift them or pitch correct them. But I have that old video on comping I'll put in the description, and all of that still applies. For this one, what I'll do is I'll just take her last take. Let's just have a listen to this so you can hear what this song is all about. His name was Miles, and he knew how to swing it when he played on his horn. Kept places jiving, grooving, kicking since the very day he was born. This is all totally a, a scratch version of the song so far, so we haven't worked on the mix or anything, but this is gonna make it a bit challenging because it is a jazz song. It's got a lot more fluctuations in pitch that we kind of want to keep. So in order to pitch correct, we need to double click on the audio and go over to where it says Vary Audio. If it's not open, click the little drop down and hit Edit Vary Audio. It's gonna analyze the entire take and put it into little blocks that look a lot like MIDI information. So over on the left-hand side, we can see the piano roll, which looks just like MIDI editing. And then now we can take our audio and we can start shifting it around according to this little grid. So I'm gonna press play. His name was Miles. So we could take this note and just bump it up wherever we want. His name was Miles. And right now you can see as I move notes around, it's kind of shifting them, not really according to this light gray, dark gray background that we have in the background that's showing us the notes. It's actually moving it according to where the notes started. So it started kind of up from this uh, F sharp, it looks like. So if I just grab the note and move it to a G, you can see it doesn't snap it to a G. And that is because pitch snap mode over here is set to relative. So it's gonna keep it, if it's a little bit sharp on a note, if you move it up to another note, it's gonna keep it that much sharp on that new note. So we wanna set this to absolute, so that now when we move pitches around, it's gonna move it to where it thinks the pitch center should be. So that's what these blobs represent is pitch, and then the warble in the middle, this line that's connecting them all, that is the actual pitch fluctuation. As you can see, this note slides down and then eventually settles somewhere around a C. And, he knew how to swing it when. and then we've also got vibrato in the middle with this huge warble right there. So what we can do there is we can select a pitch and we can say, all right, let's straighten the curve on this. That's what this line is. So we can go straighten the curve by moving the slider up. And then correcting pitch, if you choose correct pitch as opposed to straighten the curve, what that does is it moves the whole note with the fluctuations to where it thinks the pitch center should be. So if I go over to correct pitch right here and slide this, you see the whole block kind of moves up and down. And if we select all the pitches and move them up to 100% so that every note is perfectly tuned. His name was Miles and he knew. You can hear this one here, this F sharp was probably supposed to be a G. So if I go to my roads here. So it was supposed to be a G, but because it was a flat, it actually moved it closer to an F sharp. So in that case, we wanna keep the kind of pitch fluctuations that she has in there to keep it a little bit more expressive. And then if we select all of them and 
take the straight and curve up to 100%. His name was Miles and he knew how to swing it when. Now you get that auto-tune portal sound effect, right? Which is uh, one of my favorite video games. And now another thing that you're gonna see over in the inspector is this formant. And if I were to create a harmony and maybe push the vocal up a few pitches or move it down a few pitches, it's gonna sound a little bit phony. So that's where formant comes in and it kind of changes the harmonic content or the harmonic overtones of the fundamental pitch. And if you do play around with that, you're actually playing with something called timbre. So now we can do that inside Cubase, which is something I would always go over to a program like Melodyne for before. Now we can do that all right in Cubase. But watch how, what happens if we play with the formant here. His name was Miles and he knew how to swing it when he played on his horn. Kept places jiving, grooving, and kicking since the very day he was born. So very bizarre, isn't it? Kind of voice shaping as well. You could use this as a special effect on somebody's voice, even if they weren't singing, so just talking. And then the last thing is just volume, which you can adjust on any single pitch. So just remember with all of these, you could play with pitch correct on just one note, formant on one note, or just the volume of one. So I know at the very end of this phrase, it gets quite soft. So I could select that note and just crank up the volume a few decibels right there. Let's just talk about this scale assistant. So we can use an editor scale to show us a dark gray and a light gray background, which will show us kind of a grid for the key that we're in. So this song's in C minor, and right now it's set to C natural minor it would actually default at C major. So watch what happens if we go show scale note guides. Turn that on and watch these light gray and dark gray in the background here. And if I change that to C Aeolian or natural minor, you'd see that that changes to show us C minor. So now we've got a, a sort of gray line for C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. So that now tells me that this one is kind of close to an F sharp not really in the key of C minor, so this one's probably wrong. I probably need some work. So if you're new to music theory, this kind of thing can really help you out because you look at a pitch and say, all right, this is probably not in the right ballpark right here, so we need to move it closer to these lighter gray lines. So that is using the editor scale, absolutely brilliant. You can also use the chord track, which is crazy because a song like a jazz song, every chord is gonna have a different kind of scale that would apply to uh, whatever note is happening at that moment. So in jazz songs, we modulate all over the place. So you're using different scales throughout even just a regular jazz standard song. Anyway, so that's just a whole other level of complexity, which we won't worry about here. We'll just stick to a scale for this one. And in most pop songs, 90% of pop songs, you're gonna have just one scale that defines the whole song and then you're pretty much good to go. So the other thing I can do is snap pitch editing to this key. And so now when I move a note, it's gonna snap to only those lighter gray lines on the background. So that's not something I wanna do here. I want to leave this so I can have some notes that aren't in the key because you've got I've got that B natural here at the beginning, but sometimes later on she does sing some B flats in here, so things get a little bit more complicated with a song like this. Another important thing I should mention before we get into some of this crazier stuff is if you make some changes to this audio, there is a choose function over here. You can go reset all changes for selection. Something I do quite often is just select all the audio, put a little bit of pitch correction, a little bit of curve correction on everything, and then go through and specifically tune every note. But sometimes you have, even just with that little bit of correction, you get a weird artifact kind of thing that might happen, maybe a transition between notes. You can select those chunks and then just go over here and go reset all changes. So let's get into some of the, the nitty gritty details here of this very audio, the very really complex stuff. And that's these little boxes that appear over top of every chunk or every word. A couple of these things are quite simple. This one allows you to stretch the audio before and compress the audio after this line. So I can just grab this and move what I call what they call the warp. And this is a really neat feature. So let's go to this word and right here. This is really cool. It was miles and he knew how to and in this one right here, I can go and I can actually make the swing a little harder by just grabbing the end of this warp and moving this over. So now it goes, and he knew, and he knew, instead of, and he knew. So I'm actually making this swing a little bit more. Let's listen. Smiles and he knew how. 
Let's make it swing even harder. Smiles and he knew how. Let's make it straight now so that the, the and he knew is right in the middle of the beat. Smiles and he knew how. Smiles and he knew. So we're actually going and changing the timing of somebody's performance, which is super cool. Next thing that you're gonna see on every note is these top and bottom boxes. And if I grab this top one, I can just do the pitch straightening all just from this chunk. So I don't actually have to go way over here. So now I can straighten the pitch of a word and I can also move this up or down and I'm actually correcting the pitch according to this top feature. So this is now just correcting the overall pitch and this is correcting the warble inside that pitch. Another thing that you can do, as you'll see, if I mouse over the bottom of these chunks, you can actually go and cut a phrase or a word. So if you use the scissors, now I can go and adjust this one independently of this one right here. He played on his horn. I can actually go and cut this one and I can move this whole horn up to a D. Played on his horn. Or move it down to a B flat. Played on his horn. If you're making harmonies and fake phrases out of your words, you're gonna end up cutting in the middle of them all the time so you can shift things around and create new lines. Okay, so that's the basic default smart controls on every chunk. If I go over to show all smart controls, this one popped up in a more recent version of Cubase. And now we have a ridiculous amount of stuff that pops over every chunk or every word or every phrase. So now we've got extra boxes. And I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different little features that we can change on every single pitch, which is ridiculous. But let's just break these down for you. On the top left now, we've got something called tilt. And if I grab this one, I can move the front end of the note up or down. So I can have it slide in, slide up to the note, or I can have it slide down to the note. Knew how to swing. And I can bring this and slide it up. Knew how to swing. Slide up to the note and kind of get rid of what she had right there. That's the tilt. We can also tilt on the other side. So we can go like this and have it slide down at the end of the note. Knew how to swing it. And then we've also got this little diamond in the middle which shows where are you actually tilting from. So you can actually go in and tilt this now this way so we can straighten that beginning out. Knew how to swing it. Or I could move this tilt way over here and then I could do the same thing on the back end. The next thing down you can see is set range for straighten pitch curve. So if I drag this out, now when I straighten the curve, which I can, I can do from this one right here, it's only this back half that's getting straightened. So it's removing the pitch straightening from the beginning of this phrase of audio. So maybe if you have vibrato at the end, but you just wanna correct this beginning part, you can then take the other side, stretch it way over here, and then now I can take my straightened curve and it's only gonna straighten the beginning, but still keep the vibrato at the end of that word. Next we've got right here, we've got the warp start and end just like we had before. And then over on the left-hand side, now we have the ability to also play with the formant right on the chunk of audio itself. We've got correct pitch. And, and then on the right-hand side, we've got the volume. So we can boost or reduce the volume of every phrase right there. So that's all of these 11 controls that are on every single chunk of audio. One more thing I didn't even mention is if I select all the audio, if you go over to choose function, there's extract MIDI. So what that means is you can sing something in. If you're not a piano player, you could sing something in, extract MIDI, and then apply that to a virtual instrument of your choice. Some really deep features in Cubase that people have no idea about. Last thing we're gonna do here is just go through and I'm gonna pitch shift this verse, and we're just gonna go through every word and just fine tune it, give you some real world examples. And let's start this from scratch. His name was Miles and he knew. So this one right here is a C, and I just want it to be a little bit lower. So something I haven't mentioned is if you don't want to move something down, you know, to snap to a chromatic pitch, you just want it to bring it down a little bit, hold the shift key, and now when you move, you can get very, very specific and just move something a tiny little bit, but you get to choose where it stops or where it stays. So if I hear something that's just a little sharp, just hold shift, bring it down just a little bit and get it in tune. His name was Miles and he knew how to swing. That one's too sharp, so I'm gonna hold shift and bring it down a bit. And he knew how to swing it away. This one's a little flat, bring it up. And he knew how to swing it away. His name was Miles and he knew how to swing it away.
already knew. And this one's actually a little bit flat too. I want to bring that up. So what I'll probably do with this one is just try straightening the curve a little. Smiles and he knew how to swing. That seems perfect. Bring this one down just a little bit. He knew how to swing it. Back end is a little flat. So what I might do there is drag this over here and tilt this up just a little. He knew how to swing it with. This one down a bit. Bring this one up a bit. And then this one we lose the volume a little bit. So let's just grab this one. See how I can select both of these at the same time and bring them up. Now let's go to the chorus. Oh Miles, he played so sweet. So sweet. A little bit flat, bring that up just a tiny bit. Down 52nd Street. Bring that up a bit. And his legacy will linger on forevermore in every song. <sighs> Probably should have chosen a take or somebody who sings a little pitchier than Toby because this one's actually way too easy to edit. In every song. Okay, so there's an example of uh, a chunk where she's singing really kind of bluesy. If we wanted to straighten this out, let's try that. Let's move this up to a G. But we do still want it to slide down. And you can see how we have Carter. It should be actually two different phrases or two different blobs. So let's go and just split that right there. And then now we can move this one down to an F and see what happens. Now we can see this one's sliding up too much. I'm going to cut right in the middle of that one too. So I can kind of adjust the beginning and end. And now I can even go Carter. Or we can go. Bring this one up just a little bit right here. Williams and Shorter hung out with his cat. So let's solo this. Oh, oh, Miles, he played so sweet. Down fifth. So this one just a little sharp. Bring that down a bit. Down fifth. The beginning's a little more flat than the end, so I can tilt that up just a bit. Down 52nd Street. Bring that down just a tiny bit. Second Street and a Second Street. I'm going to bring this one up just a little bit by holding Shift. Second Street. Actually, now the whole thing can come down a bit. Second Street and his legacy will linger on forevermore in every song. Call. Sounds great. So that should give you a good primer to start tuning your own vocals, get in there, start playing around with all of those little smart controls and adjust things in a way that is not letting the computer just decide what it thinks is the right pitch, but actually going in and moving every single note. In my opinion, that's the best way to auto-tune something. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the bell and I'll see you in the next video.